Hello and welcome to episodes 35 to 40 of Live Island UK. I have a bit of a different setup this week because I'm still recovering from quite a nasty bout of COVID. Quick programming note, I will be recapping just the first week of Love Island USA, so if you want to just get a feel for what the American version is like, you can tune in for that. I believe the first episode airs on the 29th of July. Anyway, on to this week's recap. Tasha had a laugh and a cuddle with Billy in bed. Jack says that he's still in the doghouse, but he's told Paige how he feels. He wants her back and he brings Paige her morning drink. Remember Tasha gave Luca Andrew's ring back to give to Andrew? Well, Luca's like, why did she give it to me? I'm not the ring bearer. He does though, and he tells Andrew that people have come back from worse. He'll be fine. Dammy tells India that it feels like he hasn't spent much time with her. India wants to know if he intends to carry on with both Summer and her. She says in her confessional that she feels like she kind of has to repress her feelings for him a little bit out of respect for Deji and herself, because he did kiss Summer more than once after all. Andrew apologizes to Tasha and says that he knows he's messed up, but he wants to try again. He tells her that nothing's changed for him. He asks for a cuddle then and she says no and walks away. She says that all she can see with him is him and Coco. The boys ask Josh about Danica and he says that all of the romantic stuff comes pretty slowly for him and he doesn't want to rush because then he gets the ick quite quickly. Ugh, this guy. Jack says he's never been so excited to have someone to continue life with, referring to Paige, of course. He and Andrew go in and Jack writes a note saying, miss you honey buns, and he hides it in Paige's bed. Paige says that she doesn't quite know where her head is at. Dammy says that he's kind of scared. He can usually predict things with other people, but his situation with India is all up in the air. Deji says that he has the feeling that something stupid is going to happen as he sees Dammy go over to India. Josh starts giving him advice and I'm like, yeah, don't listen to that kid. Dammy tells India that nobody can change the way he feels about her. It's always been her. I mean, it's a very heartfelt speech. He says he misses them a lot. And India says that even though she and Deji have good chats... She can't really compare those connections, as in it's just really good with Dammy. A reconciliation is clearly in the works here, and I don't hate it. Andrew and Tasha chat, and they both reiterate things that they've said before. She also tells him that she's missed him, and he tells her that she's who he wants. There are vibes for, for sure, and a lot of sweet stares and smiles. Josh and Danica talk, and he says that he usually takes things very slowly. He wants to build a friendship first. She asks, is it just friendship then? And he's like, no, like he wants to build on the friendship. She makes it clear then, if it's just friendship that he wants, then that's fine. That's what it'll be. But if it's more, then they can get to know each other. So everyone on Twitter at this was saying that he kind of dumped her and she refused to see it. But I don't know, he's not being very explicit here. If Josh wanted to be friends only, then certainly he would have just communicated that. Still, she deserves more than this flaky kid, and she should have taken this already as a sign to kind of get out of Dodge. Demi takes Summer aside, and he tells her that he likes India a lot. She says, well, why did you do all of that stuff in Casa? He doesn't have much to say, she says, and Demi apologizes to her. She says that it is what it is, until it isn't. She does say that her feelings are hurt, though. India chats with Deji. He asks her if she wants to get back with Demi, and she says yes. He's like, okay, but I thought you'd have more self-respect than that. He felt that Dammy disrespected her by the way that he acted. He admits, though, that he'd rather that she end things than waste his time. Paige sees the letter from Jax and she's all smiles. Jax tells Paige that she can be cross for all as long as she needs to be, but he'll be there waiting for her. He kisses her on the cheek and he asks her for a cuddle the next day, but she says no. Tasha and Billy aren't exactly carrying on in bed, but they are playing around and kind of cuddling. Tasha is like... It's difficult for her because Andrew has done something with that girl. And she says that she's been putting on a good front, but she's actually hurting. Andrew tells the boys that Tasha's playing it close to the chest, but he thinks that he has a good feeling about where things are headed. Davide is like, well, you're sleeping outside while Tasha is cuddling with Billy in the bed. I don't see the point. And Andrew says, yeah, he wouldn't like to keep sleeping outside. Paige was very pleased with the note, and Gemma says that Jax loves a challenge. Paige is not going to immediately give in, though. Tasha's crying. She says that she's a bit confused. Ekansu asks if she wants to get back together with Andrew, and Ekansu tells her, you don't look at Billy the same way you look at Andrew, and Tasha's like, she and Andrew just keep gravitating towards one another. 
Josh and Danica chat. Ugh, sorry, no. He asks what she's looking for, what she would be looking for on the outside. And she says she just wants someone spontaneous who wants to do random things on the weekends. He says that he wants someone who's going to let him go out and do his thing and trust him and someone who he can also go out with. Okay, Josh. Then Ekin and Luca are chatting as they're watching Josh and Danica from the distance and they agree that Josh doesn't seem that into her. It's not in a mean-spirited way at all, though. They're just observing how they don't really talk or flirt, and Ekin asks Luca if he thinks that Danica is aware of this. They call her over, kind of like older siblings, and Ekin asks Danica if she's sure she likes Josh, but just then, Billy goes over to Gemma for a chat, and they're momentarily distracted. Billy chats to Jenna about it bothering him that Tasha and Andrew are circling each other again. She encourages him to talk to her and tell her that he doesn't want to be left on the sidelines. That's fair. She says in her confessional that if she were Billy, she would walk away rather than leave it in Tasha's hands. Andrew and Tasha are flirting. Okay, this is happening. It's just been a matter of time. She tells Ek and Sue that what she and Billy have is good, but it's not good enough. I've got to say, I don't hate this. It's like this episode has just wiped my memory of the whole Casa Amor mess. Dami chats to Jay in China and asks them, well, okay, since they're in a friendship couple now, what's their plan moving forward? And Jay says, well, to be each other's wing person. And China's like, yeah, well, since Jay wanted us just to be friends. Dami asks then if that's not what China wanted, and she says, it's fine, that's what he wanted, and it is what it is. She doesn't really have any negative or shady vibes. Andrew and Coco talk, and, and he didn't really like the way everything all came out. His bedroom business with Coco, I mean. Uh, he knows that he should have told Tasha himself, and Coco's fine. She says that in her confessional, there'll be other boys who will want her. Josh and Danica talk, and he says he doesn't know if the spark is there. Danica thought it was there in Casa Amor, but they since lost momentum since coming back to the villa. So what does he want? Does he want to cut ties or does he want to work at it? He tells her that they should go back to being single. He says that it's become so serious too quickly and he can't really see it in a romantic way for now, his situation with Danica. He's so full of it because serious where? At one point, Billy has his arm around Gemma in what might be a friendly way if this were anyone else, but because it's Billy, you never know. He then asks if, if he'll get into trouble, and Gemma's like, yeah, friends don't hug. And Luca's predictably bummed about this whole thing. Ek and Sue gets a text then. They all have to gather around the fire pit. The public has voted. Those with the fewest votes are at risk of being dumped. Ek and Sue and Davide are safe. So are Josh and Danica. In the end... Dami and Summer and Jay and China received the fewest votes, so one couple will be headed home. In episode 36, Jay and China end up going home. Summer says that she thinks that Andrew and Coco should have been on the chopping block. No way, Coco and Andrew were the main entertainment last week. Anyway, there's a farewell for Jay and China. Billy talks to Tasha and he says that he can't be in this ping pong situation. He's like, what are you saying? What do you want to do? And she says that she's decided to give Andrew another chance. Jax tells Paige that he wrote something for her and he reads how it was meeting her for the first time, his regret about what happened, what it's been like the last few days thinking about potentially losing her. Look, I might have teared up a little bit. I know a lot of people think that this was part of his manipulation because his behavior has been pretty poor, but I don't feel like I can make that call. Still, at this point, I didn't want Paige to take him back. They do end up kissing though, so it does work. Then we get a moment with Dami and India where they both run out onto the passage and towards each other and she jumps into his arms. It's definitely the moment I officially folded on these two. I don't mind if they get back together. Tasha's excited to talk to Andrew today. Remember, she's made the decision to get back together with him. The guys get a text then. They're getting a relaxing spa day outside of the villa. The girls get a text then while the guys are out for the day. Adam is coming to the villa. Adam was a bombshell from a previous season and apparently a major player, he broke hearts and his impending arrival had all of Love Island Twitter shaken for days. Paige takes an instant liking to him and he asks if Paige wants to go for a chat. They chat about the situation with Jax and she says that they're patching things up but she's open to getting to know people. Danica says that she was in a relationship since she was 14 until about 20. She and Adam chat, since he's a notorious heartbreaker, I don't know about this, I don't think she needs this. 
Ekin and Adam chat. He, he says to all the girls that he's played around, he's done all that in his younger years, he's ready for a relationship. And he tells Ekin that he gets friendship vibes from Ekin and Davide. He's interested in her for sure, and he makes it quite clear that he finds her attractive. Ekin's just playing it a little close to the vest, not exactly flirting, not exactly saying that there's a chance, but she's not completely shutting it down either. She does say though that things with Davide are going very well. Adam asks Tasha if she's open to get to know people and she doesn't give a proper answer. Uh-oh. Gemma says that it's been easy with Luca and they're both quite closed off to other people, or at least they have been. She doesn't seem to be making a play for or interested in Adam though. Luca comes in with the rest of the boys saying, honey, I'm home, just as Gemma and Adam are chatting. And he tells her, Adam tells Gemma, I mean, that she and Paige are his types. Adam pulls Paige aside for a chat and he wants to get to know Paige. She isn't completely closed off to it. Tasha and Andrew chat. He says that he'd like to move forward together and he'd like to make it up to her and she decides to give it another chance. Ugh, the girls chat to Jax and Gemma mentions that Adam said something about Jax. Lack of maturity. Jax flies off the handle a little bit and goes to Paige, all angry, demanding to know what Adam said. He even tells Billy, who was chatting to Paige, to F off because he wanted to chat to Paige. He does apologize to Billy afterwards though. So now I don't think it's Gemma's responsibility to prevent Jax from having a meltdown, but I don't think that what she said, or the way she said it was very necessary. She made it seem as though it was really bad and she said that Adam was slagging Jax off and when that wasn't my interpretation, he had just said that as a previous contestant on Love Island, he'd gone through the attention and the fame that comes with being on the show, and the new guys haven't yet. And it'll be overwhelming for them, they might act out, whereas he's been there, done that. I mean, the way Jax acted was completely on him, but I just didn't think that this was necessary on Gemma's part. Adam goes over to chat to Josh, Deji and Jax and he's talking about how he wants to get to know the girls and Jax is really on edge at this point. Adam says that the best conversations have been with Paige and with Danica and he, but not really with Gemma. He thinks that Billy might have more in common than him with Gemma. Luca tells Adam that the boys are getting a little bit touchy about things, well, mostly Jax because he seems quite triggered by Adam chatting to Paige. Jax and Paige chat and she says that he needs to get it together. He admits that he's screwing up and he feels like he's losing Paige. He's in very rough shape. He's a bit scary and he seems kind of volatile. He says that all he wants is Paige and I feel like everyone can see that he's having a difficult time. He tells Paige that seeing her with Adam will break him and then he goes outside and he just sits on his own for a bit. Tasha is crying in bed with Billy. She says that she's scared that Andrew will hurt her again but she also has this fear on missing out on Billy. Is she serious? Jack says he's never been as hurt over a girl as he's been over Paige. Dammy is still trying to make things up with India. He and Andrew make the girls pancakes and smoothies and a little picnic for breakfast. Paige says that she's not there to teach someone how to be a boyfriend. Jax needs to work on his reactions to things. India points out, rightly, that there are going to be a hundred Adams on the outside. This is how he's acting on the inside. Can you imagine how bad it will be on the outside? And Paige needs to look out for herself. Jackson Paige chats and he starts crying. He tells Paige that he's going to go home today. He wishes he could finish the journey, but he'll be waiting for her on the outside. She just needs to do what she needs to do. And he needs to get back to himself. And the only way that he can do that is by going home. Paige admits that Jax isn't meeting all of her standards right now, right now and his actions just aren't up to scratch. Jax calls everyone to the fire pit and says that he's leaving. If the best thing is to leave and wait for Paige on the outside, that's what he's going to do, he says. He has a pretty emotional goodbye with everyone, including Paige, and he tells her that he wants her to be his girlfriend and he'll wait for her. Bad behavior notwithstanding, it is really sad to watch somebody struggle this much. So I was just glad that he left and got the help that he needed. So Andrew had made pancakes for Tasha for breakfast and she's like, literally, it's not too soon, but it's just like, and she kind of trails off, but she does agree with Ekin Sue when Ekin Sue suggests that maybe Andrew should take things slower. Tasha says that she still has a good vibe with Billy and Ekin Sue tells her that whoever walks through the door, if they turn Tasha's head again, if it happens, it happens, but she doesn't think that Andrew would take her back after it. That'll be it. Davide doesn't like the way Ekinsu acts with men. He isn't sure he'll ever trust her. He says that he needs to find out if she's acting flirty with Adam. 
Coco then tells Ekin that Davida has trust issues and Ekin says that this is pushing her away. This is really childish behavior from Davida. He could just talk to Ekin Sue and find out where her head is at with Adam. Anyway, he decides then to go and talk to Adam and he asks how Ekin Sue was with him. Adam says that Ekin Sue was very respectful. He didn't get a 100% no. Ekin Sue was kind of beating about the bush and not wanting to commit either way. He says that maybe it was a little bit flirty before Davida got back to the villa but she was respectful. Ekansu asks Adam then what they spoke about and he tells her. He asks her if she is open to chatting and she says no, she wants to be loyal to Davida, but Davida's behavior is pushing her away. Davida thinks that Ekin is the fakest person. He can't wait to get rid of the heavyweight, he says. Paige says that she just wants to block out the Jacks thing because it's too upsetting. Adam has a chat with Paige and he says that he hit the jackpox with Jacks leaving and even if Jacks didn't leave, he thinks that Paige would have still given him a chance. Ekin Sue and Davide chat and she's upset that he didn't just come to her and talk to her if he had issues. He mumbles a whole lot and then he calls her a player. She points out that she never hooked up in Casa Amor. He accuses her of playing with his mind and he walks away and calls her fake. Adam gets to go on three dates and he picks Summer, Danica and Paige. He first is Summer. He asks what her type is and she says someone funny and affectionate. She says that she's also always been the other girl, but she would like to be the priority for once. Then he has a date with Danica. He asks her to teach him to dance. It's very cute. Then it's Paige. I'm guessing that this was his, this is his first choice since he's been seeking her out for a while now. She asks what he brings to the table and he says he's pretty generous. She thinks that the date went well and she's looking forward to more flirty chats with him. She does say later that she does feel a bit guilty, and but she is still open. He tells the boys that he had a really nice date with Danica. He doesn't usually dance. He wanted to give Summer a chance because he'd never spoken to her. And as for Paige, he says that he wanted to save the best for last. And that was a really good date. Indy and Dummy end up sharing a bed outside for the night. Summer says that the date night with Adam was nice, but he's just not for her. Gemma gets a text then. She and Luca are going on their first date outside of the villa. Ekansu and Davide go for a chat and, and he says that he appreciated that she said out loud that she doesn't care about Adam. She says that next time they have issues, they should talk about it with each other. And he's like, yeah, maybe. Anyway, they seem to be ma have, making a bit of a truce. Josh and Summer chat and they're kind of playful and flirty. She's intrigued by him, she thinks. Danica does her morning stretches and Billy is like, oh, hi. He wants to get to know her now. See, now I like this. He's physically attracted to her. His head was properly turned in this moment and he's going to make his move. It's like a moment as opposed to him making the rounds, talking to every girl and she's just next in the chats. I don't know. It was just a little different. It was nice. Anyway, Gemma and Luca's date is boring. I'm not going to rehash the romance stuff. They're fine, but still kind of awkward for two people who've been paired since the beginning. She says that she could see him getting along well with her family he says he wants her to be his girlfriend. There's nothing wrong with this date or them. They're, they're perfectly lovely. And I really like Gemma, but I don't know. I just, I don't care about them as a couple. Tell, Danica tells India that she might see what Billy's about. India gets a text then and she's so cute. She's like, I got a text. <laughs> anyway, there's going to be some celebrity performance tonight in the villa by Becky Hill. I've never heard of her, but the gang is really excited and they party and dance the night away. Also, at the end of this episode, we learn that the public is going to need to vote for their favorite girl and their favorite boy Islander. So obviously the person with the least votes, girl and boy, is going to have to be voted off. In episode 39, there's going to be a recoupling tonight where the boys get to pick who they want to be with. Adam will pick first. Tasha's is excited because she gets to be back in bed with her man. So the couples are kind of predictable. Adam chooses Paige, of course, Andrew couples up with Tasha, Billy couples up with Danica, which is really sweet. Dummy couples up with India, and he actually does make one of the nicest fire pit couple speeches I've heard in a minute. India thinks so too. Luca and Gemma, he says in his speech that elephant juice is getting a little boring, so hopefully they can move on to more. So if you don't know, if you mouth the words elephant juice, it looks like you're saying, I love you. That's what that is. And Luca wants to move on to saying, I love you for real, instead of saying elephant juice. Josh couples up with Summer. 
Davide couples up with Ek and Sue, and Deji couples up with Coco. Danica and Billy chat, and it's very cute. The conversation is pretty easy. I actually find this a better match than with him and Tasha, or Paige, already. Summer and Josh kiss, and she's happy. She's excited to have a cuddle in bed. Tasha and Andrew are convinced that they're meant for each other because they keep coming back to each other. Luca and Gemma chat. Luca tells her that he's in love with her, and she says that she loves him too. I don't have anything bad to say about this. I really like Gemma. It's fine. It's nice to have some positive vibes in the house. Most of the couples seem pretty happy. Demi gets a text then. There's going to be a boys versus girls challenge. It's a challenge that involves getting beers into a bin using your body. Danica and Billy chat and he's become likable since getting with her. It's not awkward at all. They're very playful and cute. Tasha says that she plans on making Andrew her boyfriend. She's going to do this whole planned romantic speech and it involves everyone else in the house. Good for them, but this plan takes up like 10 minutes of the episode. Why? Anyway, she tells him that she can't wait for him to meet her family and everybody cheers for them. Danica and Billy, sorry, they're so adorable. They also kiss for the first time. You can see that he's trying to make her laugh, not in a try hard way, but just being kind of cute and goofy. They're just playful together, which is very cute. Anyway, then the group has to gather around the fire pit. Summer, Coco, Tasha, Deji, and Josh. By the way, I love that they got done to read out Josh's name as a person to potentially go home and Andrew so actually Andrew and Tasha are both at risk in episode 40 Josh and Coco are the ones going home Tasha is having a very difficult time with being in the bottom three again. She's crying. Paige and Gemma are trying to console her. Luca is like, I don't get why she's upset. She and Andrew are official. They're together and they get to stay. Ekin mentions that Andrew is more into Tasha than she is into him. And Andrew tells Tasha that he would leave with her if it comes to that. He's found what he's looking for in the house. Luca goes over to Tasha then and he tells her that he gets that it's difficult, but she still gets to stay in the house. She has her boyfriend and it's not like she had a difficult decision to make. She argues that this really messes with her confidence. Billy asks Ekin then if Andrew were to leave, would she leave with him? And Ekin and Davido say no. Dami goes and talks to Tasha and tells her that yeah, it's not really Luca's place and he did mean well, but it's just the way that he said it came across pretty badly. But still, Tasha could be celebrating finding her love and trying not to care what people think. Tasha does get what Luca was trying to say, but she says it comes across as an attack. Most people in the villa kind of agree with Luca, but they're kind of just giving Tasha her space to be upset about it. Because, because it's easy to say to someone, don't care what people think. But if you are voted least popular or least liked some weeks in a row, you can imagine what it does to someone's self-esteem. Gemma tells Luca that she agrees with him, but there's a time and place and Tasha is a very sensitive girl. And saying all that when she was upset was just unnecessary. Paige tells Dami that she's enjoying her time with Adam. He tells her he likes seeing her happy. He asks where this is going and she says that there's potential. He tells her that Adam is only saying good things about her. There's this moment in bed between Ekin and Davide where he jokes and he says that three weeks out of the villa, she's also probably going to be telling him that she's in love with him. Andrew and Tasha tell each other that they love each other in bed and Billy and Danica share some kisses in bed as well. Tasha tells the girls the next day that she told Andrew that she loves him and Andrew tells the boys that he said that as well. She's beaming, they're happy. Dami tells India that if they were to leave today, he would be happy. He would have no regrets and he's excited about their adventures and their life on the outside. Luca comes to Tasha and he apologizes for coming over last night when she was upset but he does keep talking and he says well you should be happy because you have a boyfriend it's just very irritating because who is Luca to say how Tasha should react to the situation of being in the bottom three right Ekin Sue and Davida have a chat they're good I think Paige and Adam are doing well he says that she's the only one that he's looking at Gemma gets a text then they're going to be having a movie night the first revelation is called I know what Ekin Sue did last summer it shows Ekin Sue and George in bed in Casa Amor there seems to have been a very brief touch but it wasn't even a thing. Nothing happened. Davida says that she's a liar. The point isn't that it happened, it's that she lied about it again. This is actually really horrible to watch. It feels gross and kind of manipulative and drama for drama's sake. It's not scandalous and juicy, it's kind of anxiety inducing. Ekinsu really should have gotten ahead of this though and told Davide because this nothing thing has now become a thing. Next they play a clip of Dami telling Gemma that she might still be open if somebody else came in and turned her head and if they were more her type and her agreeing with him. This happened so long ago though, I don't think that it's really gonna impact them. Then they play the clip of Billy and Gemma. It's also nothing, Billy was kind of flirting, he was being a bit annoying to be honest, and Gemma wasn't really taking the bait. It's all nothing. 
Luke is mad though because he says that he was right about Billy and he was made to feel like an idiot about it. Anyway, only two things are revealed in this game and I guess the rest of the secrets are going to be revealed on Sunday because that's just literally where the episode ends. Anyway, that's it for this week. Feel free to share your thoughts and thank you for watching.